So what we've got here are two Gen 1 synchronic blow off valves and the only real difference between the two is that this one has the recirculation fitting installed on it right now uh, which is actually quite easy to remove by simply getting an allen key in there loosening the allen key and the recirculation fitting comes right out so these are backwards compatible all the way to the latest synchronic blow off valves and you know this is more designed for the kind of uh, recirc end of the, the valve um, but what you'll see that differentiates these two and what makes them Gen 1 valves is they use the smaller M5 brass fittings in the, in the back um, and uh, you can see that the preload adjuster is uh, squared off um, the early, early Gen 1 valves have an M3 set screw to hold the uh, adapter flange in. And the newer ones have an M4. But these guys are still Gen 1s because they have three ports. They've got the A port closest to the center. You've got your B port out here to the outside. And you've got your C port. And your C port is something that you plumb to boost only. A lot of the newer designs starting with Gen 2 have actually eliminated the C port. Well, it hasn't eliminated it. What it's done is it's taken the C port and it's run it internal to the valve. Um, but on some of the earlier models, what you'll find is that the valve is retained in a different way. So on this earlier model, you've got a set screw that holds the, um, the valve to the actuator piston. And uh, that's been eliminated kind of after the first, I don't know, I'd say about 1,000 units or so, um, it's been eliminated into the uh, being retained in a different way. So the way this valve is designed, there's actually, uh, from Gen 1 on, it's been designed so that there's no component, no fastener that can come out and fall into the charge piping uh, or anything like that. But this is the design of the Gen 1 valves, and uh, I'll take apart a Gen 1 valve just so you can see what it looks like on the inside. So once you have the back screws loose on the Gen 1 valve, you're going to notice that you're going to take off the back cap and uh, there's going to be an O-ring in, in the body that actually seals the cap to the blow off valve under pressure. You've got one large main spring um, and then you've got one very small preload spring. Okay, and um, the preload adjuster on the SB blow off valve is probably not as functional as the V3 valve, there's a small percentage of customers that utilized it, but not really that many. If you look in there, you'll find that there's a fastener that uh, holds the valve, the actual poppet valve, in place with the actuator piston. And so, you know, this guy just basically moves up and down. And if you were to rebuild this unit, you'd, you'd apply lubricant on the inner cylinder and also on the cylinder here uh, on the back cap of the actuator um, and now we're gonna take the front cover off so you can see what it looks like uh, with the front cover once we remove the front cover um, you're going to notice that the pop off the pop it valve for the BOV is in there and this guy should be able to move freely back and forth now it doesn't center as well as when the back cover is actually installed because that's just the way this guy is meant to be designed. Um, but to take it apart at another level you would hold, secure the valve in place somehow. Uh, typically the easiest way is just to push up while you get a set, while you get a hex in there to loosen off that fastener and this unit will come apart uh, very easily. The size of the valve actually has not changed um, from V1 to V2. Uh, what has changed significantly on V2 is the porting. So in V2 we've, we've gone and we've eliminated the use of not just the port C but uh, some of these um, smaller M5 fittings. Um, which we were actually initially designing with the smaller M5 fittings to reduce weight 
and complexity as much as possible, but the larger fittings actually help a lot more in terms of being able to use dash three line or AM fittings and whatnot. One of the other key features you gotta look out for is there is an O-ring here in place that seals this front cover to the body of the blow off valve. And then there's a seal here on the poppet valve itself. And that's what moves up and down and actually seals your boost for you. But if this seal is damaged or it's missing, uh, you are gonna get a boost leak here uh, through, through the housing. So you gotta make sure that all these O-rings are in place. And uh, these re we have rebuild kits, so it's, these are very easy to rebuild uh, if you needed to. Uh, the subtle improvements going from generation to generation are, are actually pretty big in terms of how the product mounts or, or you know, how it functions. Um, so we'll go and show you what the later generations look like for this product. Now for those wondering about the how the design direction ended up for the synchronic blow valve it actually started off with this little prototype here uh, that had the concept of a valve that was going to be a rotating valve a slide valve design with the rotating valve but after all the development and and some more CAD work it just kind of didn't end up in in that way as far as the final product goes but, you know, the, the interchangeable flange design has kind of always been there from the very beginning where we wanted people to have the flexibility to use whatever flange they wanted to. Um, and also the, the orientation of the SB valve where it would follow, you know, neatly along the pipe um, has kind of always been there. So... This is sort of the inspiration for, or the design study, if you will, of how we got to the SB blow-off valve. And I uh, actually found the very first SB prototype valve ever in existence, and that thing had about 10,000 miles put on it. Uh, and to this day still kind of actuates very, very easily. Um, but, you know, products never really reaches its best until unless it's uh, got a bunch of iterations put to it and is improved upon so that's what we're uh, bringing to you guys today is the newer stuff so now we're going to compare the V2 SB design to the latest uh, and greatest design which is the V3 and the V3 really incorporates a lot of design changes uh, that have accumulated over the years. If you can see, there's a significant difference in just aesthetic design. You can see how it, we you used to have the front cover swept all the way back. Uh, and I really like that design because of the continuity, how it flowed to the back and the lines kept going. But we had to go on a diet and shave weight and so we've we've shaved roughly about 30 percent weight off of the v3 design from the v2 design and then you can also see that there's a significant difference in the size of the valve and you'll be able to see that a little bit later um, when, when we take it apart there's also a big change in how it, how the mounting uh, of flanges worked so now we've got this retainer mechanism uh, which is going to be backwards compatible for all of our devices um, and should be able to uh, give us kind of a design moving forward that is backwards compatible with all the DVs even and the radial designs. So from the very beginning I always thought that uh, blow off valves and buying those kind of things were kind of a pain in the butt because they had a fixed flange and so one of the key features of the SB which is also the same feature that's on the DVs and the radials is being able to put interchangeable flanges on so that you can take the valve from one project to the next and have it still work on your next project so you've got these flanges that are totally interchangeable from one model to the next so what they do is they slide right in there 
and you can have a new flange so that you don't have to fabricate it if you wanted to change blow off valves. Um, and so we've been, we've been able to retain that in the V3 design, obviously, because we don't want folks that have been used to that system to all of a sudden have to change or some of the money they've already spent on other parts to be non-compatible. So the way that these retainers work, it's actually very simple. You first install the O-ring in, in the groove, you drop your flange in place, take your retainer, you install your retainer, and you hold the screw bolt in place to keep that retainer in there. Now the load that's being applied to the flange is in this direction. So the bolt doesn't actually get a whole lot of load, it just keeps that retainer in there so that the you know the axis of force for the load or for the bolt is that way, so it's not really gonna impact that. Um, whereas in the old design, what you what one would do is you'd take your flange and you'd install it and you'd retain it with the set bolt in place. So it's a new mechanism. Uh, and I think it's a superior mechanism uh, than what we've had historically. And I think everybody uh, hopefully can appreciate that. Um, and uh, it should give a lot more stability and, and, and strength to installation uh, of parts. Uh, but we'll go over the features here on what the really huge difference is between these parts. So... Let's get these front covers taken off so we can show really what the what the big improvement is here. So the SB design has always been an all billet uh, design for the most part, right? Uh, every component is billet, and actually, in some cases forged billet like you find in forged pistons. Um, so that's kind of the key element of how this part's designed. It needs to be able to maintain tolerance and uh, it needs to be able to uh, have close tolerances to be able to operate properly. So, you know, if, uh, not that there's any out there, but you know, if there is a knockoff out there, I'd be really concerned about them being able to even maintain some of these close tolerances uh, to get the device to function. But that being said, one of the big differences with, between the V2 and the V3 is really in the valve size. So we've been able to take the V3 design and improve on it significantly. Looks like I gotta get this cover off a little bit more. by being able to improve on the size of the valve. So you can see that there's a large difference here in the size of the valve. And that translates to about 40% more flow with the new design versus the older design. You can also see with the finning here that we've been able to shave off a lot of the weight uh, associated with the SBV2 and V1 design, right? So we've been able to shave a lot of weight off the design by, by doing that. Um, and that's, that's pretty significant, especially for some of these installations where you guys don't have a choice but to run the valve uh, vertically. Um, the reason why we didn't integrate the larger valve design for a very long time is if, if you take a look, there wasn't a change in the size of the front cover at all and the only option was for the front cover to grow in diameter for the valve to grow right so uh, that was a huge challenge and if it wasn't for the use of good CAD software and optimization software and doing flow analysis uh, we, we wouldn't have been able to get to the larger valve design because now we can we have a larger valve design within the same packaging dimensions um, as we had before, and it is able to flow, you know, without having any issues. So this little guy has so much complexity in machining on the inside as far as 
geometries go and just little fillets and and, and little design uh, features that uh, needed to be there in order for the thing to even function properly. I can't even tell you. Uh, but it's gone through a lot of optimization. So, the valve has been significantly improved from the V2 to the V3 design. Um, one other thing is we've also switched out the fastener material from the V2 to the V3 design from uh, zinc uh, steel to stainless and I was kind of fighting that for a long time and a lot of people probably assume it's a question of cost but not really. Uh, the thing with zinc steel is it it has a really great property of acting like a natural Loctite to anodize aluminum and so over time it just it, it, it kind of bonds itself to the aluminum so it's a, it's a much better uh, you know uh, long-term fastening method but you also get corrosion and people don't like seeing rusty things on parts that they spend money on so uh, in the long run we just switched every all the hardware has been switched to stainless uh, to be able to meet that kind of request or requirement that people have um, for products. So now we're going to go ahead and take this guy apart so we can show the difference. So as you can see here, on the outside, the back caps don't look much different from one generation to the next, right? Uh, we've actually added some markings so that you, it's easier to instruct people which one's port A, which one's port B on the valve. Um, so uh, we've got that. But the real big difference is we've taken the actuator piston and we've integrated it onto the cylinder. I mean onto the back cap. Cylinder's integrated into the back cap now. So it's a completely different design. I think it, it creates better stability for actuation. Um, so there's just a lot of different benefits that we get out of doing that. Now, in the old design, you had a large mainspring and a small preload spring. In the new design, there's only one spring. So now with the new V3 design, uh, what we've got is a single spring being used in the SB as opposed to the older design where we had multiple springs, the larger main spring and the smaller uh, preload spring. So what that does is it opens up the world of possibilities for somebody that has a V3 SB compared to like the V2 SB. This is the same spring that is and the same spring geometry that is being used in the DVs and the radials and uh, some other designs even that are uh, moving forward. So it opens up a wider range of, of spring options if you have a V3 uh, synchronic blow-off valve. And what we've also done is in this design with, with, the, with the redesign is you'll find that the piston is a completely different piston design. We've lightened the weight of it and still been able to maintain the amount of valve lift that uh, we were looking to achieve. There's a lot of weight shaved in the middle of the piston, etc. So there's been just a lot of optimization that we've gone through uh, to be able to have this design. With the new actuator that has the cylinder integrated into it, both cylinders actually with the synchronic uh, technology, it allows for much better stable actuation in the long run than what we uh, used to have in the design. So it's, it's just a better product overall. Now if you do have an old uh, V2 SB, uh, it'd be good for you to know that you can actually take a V2 SB and we'll have an upgrade kit for you to be able to get the larger valve that you can install on your V2 
with a larger front with a updated front cover so you can make the valve larger for your V2 SB and still upgrade it. Uh, now you should also note that some of these other upgrades too such as the bigger piston and the different uh, spring are not backwards compatible with V2 and V1 designs. They just simply don't fit. It's just a completely different machining design. So um, you can upgrade the valve size and get more flow out of it if you even need it, but it's probably not likely uh, that you're going to spend more money beyond that uh, because there's a point where you're spending the money on upgrading the valve size and you're probably just better off buying a whole new uh, V3 valve and just sticking your V2 valve on eBay somewhere because there's a fairly good demand for them on the secondary market anyways. So uh, what, what we like to do is be able to design product that is backwards compatible for people so that if you've already invested in, in previous product, you still have uh, some options to be able to kind of update uh, the part that you've got. So we're, we're trying to maintain some backwards compatibility as much as possible. Uh, but the new design is, is, a, is a far improved design. It is a better product overall. Um, and so that's what we're into is really coming up with generational improvements in product so that um, you know that we're, we're not just kind of throwing something out there. We're actually testing, testing, finding what's going to make it better. Not to say that it was bad to begin with, but, um, you know, there's always things you can make better in any product. There's always things you can improve, and we're, we're not going to be the company that sits there and says that we know it all. So if we, if we find something out there to improve product, uh, we look to implement it. And if you've got a V2 valve and, um, you know, you think you've been left behind and you've got to buy the new one, which a lot of people just would rather buy the newer one and just eBay the, uh, the older one, um, we still even have some backwards compatible upgrades for you. So, in closing, that is the... the overall major differences between the V2 and the V3 design is really one larger valve that we've been able to achieve anyways with the new V3 design is larger valve, significant weight reduction, new mounting scheme, uh, retaining, mounting and retaining scheme. The mounting is the same, the retaining is kind of what's changed. Uh, a new centralized kind of spring to give you more options. And the actuator design has been modified slightly, uh, not, a, not significantly departing from the technology because it's still the same as the patented technology that has been in the blow-off valves and the wastegates from the very beginning. But, you know, we just improved upon it uh, so you guys kind of get a better product in later generations.